You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all of the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators, and this is The Food Code. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. We got to figure out a different way to open these up because I edit all of our podcasts Every and I time. Say, say the same thing. Every, Every time. time. What else well, are we supposed aw- to say? It's awkward. It is awkward. It's like Travis. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tra- I don't think Travis listens to our He's podcast. He's going to be on our podcast. So oh, when? We are recording with him on the 23rd. We're okay. doing two podcasts We're doing with him. Fertility, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, Travis James Zipper. Sorry, as Liz and I are just like having a conversation over the mic. We're just <laughs> <laughs> Travis James Zipper. We always have to say his full name because he I always know. says his full name. Yep. Um, he is one of our mentors. He's awesome. Super, super um, smart guy. And so he always jokes every time he's opening up a video that he says, welcome back. Yes. <laughs> so I just was thinking about the fact that, yeah, we do say happy Friday. Mm-hmm. But hey, you know what? Listen, the positive. We TGIF. need to bring positivity in the world. TGIF. I know. I love God. Who didn't love TGIF on Nickelodeon as a kid? No, you didn't? So <laughs> the shows that I watched as a kid was Boy Meets World. Uh-huh. That um, was on TGIF. City Guys. Oh, I didn't watch City Guys. See at T Y, you can't see what these guys. Oh, you don't know I that? remember the song. I yes. don't remember watching it very much. Brady Bunch. Yeah, I did step by step sometimes. Full house, obviously. Oh, full house, of course. Every yeah. episode. Yeah. Friends. I watched that. Friends. I watched a little bit with friends. Probably I'd, when I was like in high school. Yeah. And like college when you binge watch shows and stuff. But yeah, yeah I, I loved Friday night when like you're a kid and like you weren't going out yet, you know, and like trying to go out and hang out with your friends. Um, but you would like get pizza or whatever. And mm-hmm. yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. And you didn't have to pay for anything. I know. You, you, you know what I used to happen? I was like 13 or 14 and my parents would go out to eat and leave me home and I would just watch TV and <laughs> sit on the couch by myself. <laughs> so my niece, sometimes when we go up to the boat, she doesn't always like want to go out with all the adults, mm-hmm. which I totally get. She's 13 or 14, I think. Yeah. And so she's like, yeah, I'm just going to order pizza. And like, she just hangs out on the boat or like if Art and I get a hotel and we bring Marcus, she's like, I'll just babysit Marcus. She's like, can you guys go get me Chick-fil-A? <laughs> we're like, okay, sure. But all right, let's dive into this. Today we're talking about food is not your problem. Rather, your relationship with food is what we want to talk about today. And of course, we need to caveat here that yes, obviously, food is really addicting. Like yes. the food industry has created our f- food, especially processed foods, ultra palatable. And so we have to think, you know, sugar, fats, carbs, all of those things, very, very addicting, especially sugar. So yeah. we're not necessarily talking about, you know, binge eating disorders or anything like that. We're, we're talking about this from more of a place around our relationship with food is suffering because we are living in the diet culture, meaning yes. we are restricting ourselves, trying to diet, and then we just can't keep it together. And so we swing the pendulum the other way. Yeah. And so that's what we want to talk about today. So again, before we dive into this, this is a fiery, it's Friday fire, right? So don't get offended. No. And like, I, here's the other thing that I would say is we're not saying that you're a bad person either with this stuff. Like I think a lot of people have so much guilt around food there's so much anxiety there's so much fear and we think that like what's wrong with me why can't i keep it together why can't i you know like why do i suck at this so much type thing and so we just want to help you identify we want to help you identify these things and like liz was saying yes food is highly addictive guys food does not make this easier on us we'll say that it it does not make it easier at all because we also then end up usually malnourished and then your body's kind Mm. of like creating these responses within the system of the brain physiologically to drive you to go and get these cravings and this food and this stuff and so there's a lot going on scientifically but we want to delve mainly into the relationship with food aspect today um and you know a a bad like a poor relationship with food one that is not going to help us thrive usually involves restricting Mm -hmm. and in turn overeating foods these usually do not go apart from each other they go hand in hand we always talk about binging it's not a binging problem it's a restricting problem and you know so 
if you are constantly dieting, if you are binging and restricting, if you are feeling shame or guilt around foods, those are usually signs, you know, of an unhealthy relationship with food. Yeah. And I want to talk to just in terms of like the feelings of guilt and shame around food, because what I would say to people out there is instead of feeling guilty or feeling bad or feeling ashamed of certain foods that you might consume, or let's say you over consumed, what I would ask you to do is reflect upon that situation. Like what emotions were driving you in that situation? What can we learn from that? Maybe the root cause is that we didn't have a plan in place for the week and our blood sugar crashed and McDonald's was the closest place. And you were so hungry at that time. You're like, yeah, I'm getting the Big Mac and a, and a you know, big old fry and a Pepsi because that's just what sounded good in the moment. So we don't want you to feel bad about these things. We just simply want to bring the awareness so that you can evaluate and do better for the next time. Because when we have a poor relationship with food, one of the common signs is that feeling of guilt. And it's also that feeling of guilt just around eating in general. Like we fear certain foods and we feel Mm -hmm. guilty if we shared a cupcake, you know, with somebody because we know that cupcakes aren't super nourishing. Okay. Another telltale sign here of having a poor relationship with food is that you go to extremes and you avoid or you restrict foods that are air quote labeled as bad. Beck and I always talk about the fact that unless we are going through a gut healing protocol, some sort of, you know, really dialed in protocol that it is necessary to restrict certain foods and whole food groups at some points in time, we don't label food as good or bad because Mm -hmm. we don't want you in turn to feel good or feel bad because of your food choices. Yeah, absolutely. And like, if you have a rules list around food, like if you're like, oh, I don't eat this, or I don't eat that, unless you are getting physically ill from those things. And if that's a matter of fact, like, okay, maybe we delve into that a little bit more and figure out why are we getting physically ill from those things? Because there's probably a reason. Um, Or like, if you have things where you just, you can or can't eat, like, oh, I, you know, I can't have that. Or like, oh, I'm being so bad eating this. I hate when people say that. It makes me so angry. (laughs) Like you're, I'm being so naughty eating this. Like it's a cookie, Janet, just eat the cookie. Like it's fine. So if you also, I think rely too much on calorie counters or apps to tell you like when you're done eating for the day, Liz and I use my fitness pal with a lot of our clients guys, Mm -hmm. but the goal is to get them to a place where they're not using it and to understand food because Intuitive eating is really hard in today's world if you don't understand food, if you're simply going off of hunger levels or what you want that day, like what sounds good, because like we said, food is addictive. So if you are in a place where like you have anxiety around not tracking your food because you've tracked it for so long and you end up either going to bed hungry because you hit calories, quote unquote, for the day, so you can't eat anymore, or you're stuffing yourself at the end of the day trying to hit calories, even though you're not hungry, like I consider that a problem. That's that's something that needs to be addressed because we can, we shouldn't have to live our lives entering everything we eat into a My Fitness Pal or a Lose It app or a fit Calorie Tracker. Like Liz and I both, I would say the majority of the past year. I mean, you went through your powerlifting meet, so I know you were tracking during that. When, yeah, because I suck at eating carbs. If yeah, because Liz doesn't eat carbs. She doesn't eat enough. <laughs> I do. The thing is, I do eat carbs. Like I can have a rice cake. I'll have. You see me have sweet potato the fries every day. The types of carbs you eat are not very. They're dense. just not super dense. Yes. Yeah. So actually, this brings up a good point because somebody asked me this morning on Instagram, "Do you track calories? Do you track macros, or do you just intuitively eat?" And my response was, "It depends upon the season um, of." life for me? You know, am I going into an intentional cut phase? If I am, yes, I am going to be tracking my food and I'm also going to be weighing out my food. Day to day, I know enough about food and nutrition and I don't have a poor relationship with food to the point that I feel I'm tempted all the time with things that, no, I focus on building my meals with high quality foods. And if I don't want eggs every day for breakfast, then I switch it out for something different. And I'm not concerned if it's 50 calories more, 50 calories less. I also have been tracking my blood sugar lately. Mm -hmm. And that has taught me a lot about what I actually need to do. Because for me, for a long time, I'd get up, I'd go, I'd work out, come home, get Marcus off to school. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, crashing and my heart would be racing and I'd feel like really anxious and I would feel physically stressed and intense. Like I couldn't take a breath and I was like, what is going on? So what I find, I found that I need to be eating within about a half hour to an hour of waking. And then I need to eat regularly every two to three hours. And in order to keep my blood sugar up into the stable range, 
I need carbohydrates at most of my meals. And so the only reason that I would be tracking is because I'm also doing it for a purpose. And I think this is where so many people who fear food or you know have a bad relationship with food is they get caught up with tracking for the sole purpose of hitting a number. And they ignore their hunger cues. They ignore the symptoms that their body is telling them. And so that's one thing I would challenge everyone today to think about is what is your relationship with food like in terms of your symptoms too? Because that's really important. And we'll get into you know the good relationship with food in a second. But the other thing here that we always see with people who come to us is that they have this history of yo-yo dieting, right? And their relationship with food sometimes is to the point where they are so afraid to even track their food because they feel like compulsive or obsessive compulsive about it due to other programs that made them get within this, you know, macro range every day. And you couldn't check in your with your coach if you didn't have all your food perfectly tracked. And we don't believe in those guidelines, honestly, because it doesn't teach people. It teaches you how to use an app and how to track. And here's the thing, you can manipulate your macros. You just choose a different entry in my fitness yeah, pal. Exactly. We focus on educating our clients, listening to their body, tracking their biofeedback more importantly than anything else and learning what's in food. Take that view of your day and learn, oh, wow, I didn't hit my carbohydrates today. Even though I thought I had enough carbohydrates, mm-hmm. I fell short. If you're like me, I fell short by like 50 to 60 grams. But guess what I didn't do? I didn't go sit down and have a bowl of rice at 9.30 p.m. before I went to bed. I was like, okay, I'll learn from this and I'll do better tomorrow. I would add a bowl of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I do love cereal. <laughs> Um, also like if you have, I think this is a big one that a lot of people struggle with social settings. Mm -hmm. Like if you have immense stress and anxiety in social settings of like what others may think of your food choices or being around a lot of foods that like you don't feel in control around, that's a sign that like things need to be worked on guys. Mm -hmm. It's not, you shouldn't not enjoy social settings because of the food there or because of what you think people are going to think of you. Um, and you know, like we said, again, if you find yourself restricted, or binging. Um, if, you know, having one cookie doesn't satisfy you, having, you know, a, a piece of cake doesn't satisfy you, you find yourself needing to consume the whole thing or like, you know, the whole, oh, well, I'm going to go on a diet tomorrow. So I need to eat the rest of this cake. Like I need to eat the rest of the cookies in the bin. So they're out of the house. Like, no, you can just throw the cookies away too. Also, if you're planning on doing like a different nutritional approach or something, but you know, it's, it's very last chance syndrome. It's the last chance syndrome. It's that like, I got to get it all in because I don't know the next time I'm going to allow myself to have this. And here's the thing. The only reason that Liz and I like are, you know, talking about this the way that we do is because we've both been there. Mm-hmm. Like I have, Oh my gosh, I, I feel like I've blacked out the binge moments from my brain, but there were a lot of them binging entire bags of checks mix, binging entire bags of chips. I used to do it in private. I used to like, I would, you know, wait until Nick left the room. Um, I would do it like when no one was around by the dessert table, like shoving as much in my mouth as I could. It was, there's a lot of different disorder to it guys. Um, and everyone deals with it differently, but know that you aren't alone. Know that it is something that can definitely be, be improved upon. Um, so we want to talk about like, well, what does a good relationship with food look like? Yeah, because this is what we want all of our listeners and all of our clients that we work with. This is where we want to get you ultimately. So many of you, you might resonate with what we just talked about in terms of, you know, the poor relationship with food in some way, shape or form. Maybe you're not all of them. Maybe you're not, you know, more than a few of them. But I want you just to kind of think about like, where am I at now? And does this sound better? Because we want everyone to have a sound relationship with food that you're not afraid, you are not scared because you understand and you have that confidence in yourself and your choices because of that knowledge that you have around what food is that you give yourself permission to eat foods you enjoy. You guys have listened to us probably talk about cinnamon rolls 1800 times on our podcast. Becca and I love cinnamon rolls. We give ourselves permission when we choose, not out of any heightened impulse or whatever. I'm so angry today. That person pissed me off. Let's go get a cinnamon roll. roll. (laughs) It's like, hey, I went to Molly's Cupcakes with Marcus yesterday. You want to share a cinnamon roll tomorrow? Cool. It's delicious, right? And it was enjoyed and we also had our eggs with it and we you know moved on from it. But you also have to get to a place where 
you're not emotionally controlled and emotionally tied to food. And for me, that is where my poor relationship with food stemmed from. I would use food as a crutch and an excuse when I had a bad day, when I was feeling sad. Shortly after my mom passed, for sure, I would you know, eat German chocolate cake because that was mom's favorite German chocolate cake or get Cheetos because mom loved Cheetos. You know, little things like that that I allowed my emotions to control my choices with what I was putting into my body, but in turn, it only made me worse. And so we want to get you to a place where you can also listen and respect your hunger cues. And this is what we talk about when we mean like more of intuitive eating. When we say hunger cues, it means if you wake up in the morning at six o'clock, you didn't have a good night's sleep and you are ravenous, please don't follow your intermittent fasting rule that says you can't eat until 11 or 12. You're going to do more damage from a blood sugar perspective Mm -hmm. than you will if you just ate a well-rounded, balanced meal. Yeah, and the other thing that we need to say here is like, if you have not listened to your body for a long time and you don't have hunger cues as a normal person would, that needs to be addressed first. Mm -hmm. If, If you are eating one meal a day or you're like never hungry, that is a problem. It, you you should have hunger cues if you've gone four to five hours without eating. Like you need to make sure you're getting enough calories in the day. You need to make sure that you are being consistent with your intake before you can eat intuitively. Because unfortunately, a lot of people have gotten to a place where like they just maybe haven't fed their body great over the past year or decades, you know? And so their body isn't talking to them great. And so we need to get, in, get into a good place in terms of our hunger cues to be able to eat intuitively. Um, this is a big one that was hard for me for a really, and it's still hard for me. Um, eating until you're satisfied, not until you're stuffed. So, especially with like really palatable foods um, or things you haven't had in a long time. Yeah, this like, has been something that I've I've consciously had to do many times. Um, like it, it is not natural for me. Still, it's something that I'm very aware of. Um, and I eat slowly and I eat, you know, I chew each bite and I enjoy each bite, but I, I've started to be very aware of my fullness levels. Um, and obviously with pregnancy, it's very different. Um, but even before pregnancy, I would, I would stop when full and I would wait, I would wait five to 10 minutes, especially like on date night when Nick and I would go out to eat and I was like, I think of this one place we got a lot during COVID. They had this like amazing chicken pita and it was like um, melted cheese and like some aioli and stu- avocado and stuff like that. And it was so good. And I totally wanted the whole thing, but I would be really full after like a half or three quarters of it and putting the rest down. And like, just, I had gotten to the point where being overly stuffed was so uncomfortable and unenjoyable for me that I never wanted to feel that again. You know, and I'm not saying that I never feel that again. Like, sure, there are times where I overconsume and just like eat too fast and don't realize it. Um, but I'm very careful of this one because it used to be for me overconsuming sugar and not being able to stand up straight because my stomach hurt so bad. And so it's a very sensitive thing for me, but it, I think it's something that's really hard for a lot of people, like finishing your plate, you know? Super, super hard, especially when you grew up maybe in an environment that you had to finish your plate. Yeah. You know, like that's what mom and dad said. We don't waste food. Can't remember how many times I grew up and I would hear there's starving kids in China. You can't leave food on the plate. You have to finish this, right? I mean, that's it's an honest truth. Yeah. And it's obviously, it is true that there are children, you know, that are starving in, in other third world countries. And we do as a country, we consume crazy amounts of food, but we also throw away and waste so much more. And that's why we love all of these boxes. I know you've got the Misfits box. We've got mm-hmm. some other um, at my house right now boxes <laughs> that we get like the the not so pretty things that aren't sent to the store, so that that doesn't go to waste. Okay, but I digress. On to the next thing here: a good relationship with food, and this is also something that I know that I've had to work hard on, and Becca has too, is not caring about what other people think and letting other people dictate your food choices. What do we mean by that? We mean that when you go on vacation and someone's pressuring you to eat something that you know is going to make you feel physically ill, you don't care and you're able to stand up for yourself and you're say, hey, you know, no thanks. I'm going to choose whatever else is on the menu that you want, you know, because you want to be in control of what you put in your body and you don't care if someone else is offended because you chose different than what they chose. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, when they're pre-pressuring you and they're trying to p- push food on you, we hear that from clients a lot, people try to push food on me, it's because they want to feel better about consuming it themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's an insecurity of them, not of you. You choose what you put into your mouth. They yeah. did not put 
the whole pizza in your mouth. Yeah. And you don't feel the need to justify it either. Like you don't feel the need to be like, oh, well, I'm trying to, you know, watch what I eat or I'm trying to remove this because of this. Like, no, you just take the food that you want to eat and you eat it. Like that is, you, there is way too much surrounding this in today's culture. And it's so infuriating because like your choices of what you put into your body should affect no one else. Mm-hmm. No one else, unless they are truly physically damaging your body, like eating disorder level, you know, um, toxicity level, like stuff like that. It should affect. And even then it really doesn't affect anyone else other than like, you know, maybe the people that love you and want you to be healthy. But at the end of the day, guys, like it is no one else's business. And so you need to understand you should never have to justify your choices of what you're eating. Like, you know, if someone asks, but I'll be, what I usually say is like, no, it's just felt, it's what I felt like eating. Why'd you put what on your plate? What you put on your plate? Why'd you order that off the menu? Like it, just throw it back at them if they want to come at you with it. Like, I don't know. It's, we have to be able to stand up for ourselves. And I think when you, the biggest thing is when you understand why you're eating, how you're eating, and you can correlate it to how good you can feel, these things become much easier. So it's much. when you're doing a diet out of restriction, out of hate, out of disdain for your body that you're in right now. Those are things are hard. Like how people talk about them, you usually can see like, oh, I can't have that right now. You know, I'm not allowed to have that right now. I'm trying to lose weight versus you know, I just don't really feel very good when I eat that. You know, I found that like, I just feel better without those things in my diet. Yeah. It's a much easier place to stand ground on versus the shakiness of like, I don't know why I removed all of the carbs other than to just lose weight. I don't, I don't really know what it's doing for my body. Like <laughs> I got to give a shout out to one of our clients, Ariana, because we just had this call yes. this week and she's like, you guys, this is so eye opening to me and I've learned so much and I'm able to speak to it. People ask me, you know, Ari, you look so good. What are you doing? And she's able to talk to them about the fact that she's strength training. She's nourishing her body. She is, you know, focusing on her lifestyle habits and she's not talking at all about calories and macros and things like that. And, you know, her friends are just like, well, what diet plan is it? And she's like, it's not a diet. This is my lifestyle. I've learned about food. Mm -hmm. I've learned about the things that make me feel good. Just today, she messaged us her pictures and she's like, I feel so empowered and I feel so amazing looking at these photos side by side. I never thought that I'd get here and fall in love with how I feel. And so that's where you want to get to. You want your relationship with food to come from a place that is so solid and so sound that it's not about a diet, like an air quote here, diet, right? That's just the food that you're consuming. It's about how you nourish your body. And that's the last one that we want to touch on is, you know, when you have a really good relationship with food, the foods that you consume It's not just focused on the calories. It's focusing on how you're nourishing your body, Mm -hmm. looking for those nutrients. Where am I adding in the good and giving myself the energy that's going to help me accomplish my goals and not just another 100 calorie pack of Chip Ahoy cookies or whatever to to, to fill the gap. To get rid of this depressing hunger that I feel all day long because I'm trying to starve my body to lose weight. Like we, you guys, we have to fix this. We have to fix this because the mental part of this is what makes or breaks this long-term. And so how do we start to shift this? Like one, like Liz was saying earlier, you have to stop the extremes. There has to be, you know, an opening up to different foods that you are afraid of. So what we do with a lot of our clients is write down foods that you're afraid of. Write down things that you have fear or anxiety or you feel like you're out of control with and start to identify them and identify where it's coming from. Like, was this from a particular diet that you followed where they told you that you couldn't eat carrots because they're too high in carbs? Like, where are these things coming Mm -hmm. from so that you can start to break them down? Like, okay, this person that, you know, instructed me on this diet told me that I can't have XYZ food. Maybe I'll do a little bit of research on my own. Maybe I'll do a little bit of research outside of their word that they're giving me. Especially if like you're not working with them if or anymore. If you are, challenge it. Challenge the people that are telling you the information. Why aren't you supposed to have carrots? What about like the benefits of them? What about, you know, there's so many sides to the puzzle and like we've talked about before, if you tra- if you googled like diet advice or foods that are healthy on the internet, you'd probably not be able to have any foods because there would be so many conflicting lists of what you can and can't have that there wouldn't be any anything left. And so that's why you have to be able to listen to your body and trust your body more than you trust the outside sources of just like, this is what you're being told is good and not good. And so we have to start with these extremes and identify where they're stemming from. Yeah. 
I'm just going to caveat there that the person that told you not to eat the banana or the baby carrots is probably somebody who's just had a weight loss journey on their you know own and that's what worked for them because their coach told them to do that or they were into like bodybuilding or a very yes. specific physique competition in which those things are removed but they can't give you from a lifestyle perspective the reasoning behind why you shouldn't consume those things so i digress on that that's just a little side note because like, we see that all the time we do like, in the nutrition industry you know i got this meal plan from blondie on instagram and i'm like what what is this we just had an intake call today. And I was like, they flipped you not only with your carbs, they flipped you a hundred grams of protein in a day. In a day. No wonder you felt like shit in your digestive system because that's huge yeah. amount of protein to flip flop. And that's what I do. I like, I challenge, I, I challenge doctors. I challenge coaches. I challenge everyone because I'm like, it's my body. You're telling me what to do with it. Why? Why am I being like, that is a, something that Liz and I and our coaches are so adamant about. I want to explain it to you. You don't want to hear it. That's okay. I'm going to explain it anyways. I want you to have the education. I want you to have the knowledge. I don't want to just tell you what to do because that is useless. That is useless mm-hmm. to you. And so when you have the education, you have the knowledge, you are empowered and you can make the choices that are best for your body and for yourself. So Okay, we're very, very, very passionate about that. <laughs> All right. The second thing here is you can work on the quality of your food. So right now, if you're in this place where you just have a horrible relationship with food and you're struggling with fear, shame, guilt, let's just start with working on quality of food, building well-rounded meals. Maybe you're someone who fears fat because you were told that we should be, you know, utilizing fat-free foods or, you know, nut butter is too dense or seeds or olive oil or this is a big one, butter, right? You shouldn't eat butter. You shouldn't have bacon because there's too much fat in there. Start adding that in slowly. Like Mm -hmm. healthy fat, good omega-3 is really, really important. Some of my favorites outside of butter, uh, I love chia seeds. I love adding bacon to my Brussels sprouts. I love We eat a lot of bacon in our house. Yeah, we do too. We got free bacon, bacon for life on Butcher Box. I saw that. It's again, God, Liz gets so angry at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting angry at you. I'm just thinking you're, you're missing out. Butcher Box is amazing. I know. Um, anyways, so thinking about here, like what are the things that you fear? And let's start to slowly incorporate them in. There is a caveat here that there are some health foods that are, yes, very dense and easy to overeat. Mm-hmm. You know, let's think like dates, for example. We see those in a lot of like the Pinterest recipes. Um, yeah. And th- there's not bad at all they're just pretty high in sugar and so we want to use them sparingly same thing with other things is like your nuts your seeds they're very you know palatable and easy to like over consume we have clients all the time like i just eat the you know peanut butter out of the the jar with a spoon and like that's totally fine as long as we're able yelled to at me today because i was eating the peanut butter out with my finger <sighs> he's very particular with certain things. it's my <laughs> peanut butter i bring it to liz's house <laughs> He's very particular with certain things. It's okay. Um, So start to build your meals. This is how we recommend building your meals, okay? First, you're going to have a good quality protein. Always think protein first because most people don't get enough protein. If you can, pair that with a veggie some way, somehow at most of your meals. We get it. Breakfast is kind of hard to do. And then add some healthy fats, like I mentioned. Lastly, and we also recommend consuming your carbs last, is when we'll add in the carbs because Mm -hmm most people, especially in the standard American diet, it's like carb first. It's very very carb dominant, right? Like I'm going to have a granola bar. I'm going to have pasta. I'm going to have pizza. And it's just very carb dominant. And we're not saying you can't have those things, but let's think of like, how could we add some good? If it's pizza night, have a salad and eat your salad first. So when it time comes time to have the carbs, one, you're offsetting the, Im- the impact of the carbohydrates and the insulin response for your blood sugar. But two, you feel already a little bit more satiated and full from your salad with a little protein, maybe some good olive oil, and you're less likely to overconsume and eat the entire pizza. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And then focus on mindful eating. Like aim to consume treats or more fun foods when you're happy, not when you're sad or emotional or angry or frustrated. Like we talk about this with drinking a lot. Like don't drink when you're sad, like drink when you're happy, drink when it's a joyous thing. Don't drink because you're upset or you've had a stressful day and you need to de-stress. We talked about that on the other podcast this week coming up about stress, not adaptive stress. Like don't, that is not a stress relief to your body at all. Yeah. I know you think it is, but it's not. Um, and so in this, I think it's really helpful to kind of ask yourself, especially when you're in this process of learning this, when you are eating, kind of asking yourself some questions like, 
am I noticing flavors and textures? Like, am I truly enjoying the food I'm eating or am I only eating it because it's available or, you know, I really like I, I wanted it or it's on my diet or whatever it is. Like, yes, there are times and phases for everything, but at the end of the day, you should enjoy your food. Does this food hit the spot? I think this is a big one, especially in like a maintenance timeline. Um, this was something that I really have been trying to listen to my body more with is like, do I actually enjoy this food? Am I craving it? Do I want it? Like, am I liking what I'm eating? And that doesn't mean you got to go eat a burger and fries every day because that's what you want. Like, no, you can get enjoyment from foods that are still nourishing foods. And so are you actually enjoying this? This is something that I've really tried to improve um, because food should not just be a means to an end, guys. You should enjoy the food you're eating. Um, You know, how is this food changing your appetite? Are you getting full from the food or are you constantly hungry? Are you always looking for something more after the food? Like, is the food satisfying you? Mm-hmm. I think it's very important to address. Yeah, usually, and we've talked about this before, usually when you need that something, something after your meal, you're just eating an imbalanced meal. Yep. And if you're eating a high carbohydrate diet, guess what? You're going to crave more carbohydrates. So this is, again, where we got to bring it back to when is it worth it? Like, does it truly serve you? Does it serve your goals and evaluate those things and just be mindful? And, you know, you're going to have to eat some foods, uh, maybe that you don't love every single day. Like you don't crave every single day, but I agree with Becca. That's why I created the fit cookery cookbook. Like Mm -hmm. I wanted to enjoy the food that I was eating and I wanted it to be healthy. I want it to be nourishing. And I wanted it to be something that at that point in time fit my fat loss goals. And so there are plenty of ways that you can make food fun and flavorful and palatable, but you're going to have to put a little bit more effort in. And for some people, they don't want to do that that gets tough, you know, then you're probably going to end up with that chicken, broccoli and rice. And I feel bad for you because I'm not eating chicken, broccoli and rice every day. (laughs) So that's just something that we wanted to bring to you guys today to really think about, you know, your relationship with food, evaluate, like, where does this stem from? And if you struggle, you know, not to track your food and you struggle with, you know, being able to enjoy a banana or share a cinnamon roll with somebody like those are things we need to address like mentally, emotionally, and then get you to a place where you can change that relationship with food so that you can live your life and you can enjoy your life. So with that, we hope you guys have a great weekend. Yep. We'll be back on Monday. Thank you all so much for being here. If you've enjoyed this podcast, the best thing that you could do for us as a gift to us would be to take a screenshot and share it on Instagram, tag us, share it on Facebook, whatever platform that you listen, or just tell a friend, invite a friend to listen to this podcast. Um, the more that you can kind of share with word of mouth, the more people that we can touch throughout the world. Five-star reading and review on iTunes as this helps us grow and reach others. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day.